everybody. You are so right. What a crazy, crazy damn day. And, you know, I'm having to look up. Uh, someone sent me a text last night saying that apparently another president got very, very ill at this time. And it's just so much to explain, so much that's going on. I guess let's maybe look at... Um, Let's look at this picture. This kind of says it all. So this is the Trump family during the debate. Uh, and uh, uh, it looks like only Melania is wearing the mask. She's the only one, I guess, that figured it out, that maybe it'd be a good idea to wear the damn mask. My goodness. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to look for my uh, texts. But I, but I can't do it quite yet. Uh, let me see, because because I got a great text last night from, uh, well, I can't tell you who. But he sent me something uh, that apparently, I want to say this date in history, there was another another person who uh, who got very sick, another president. Yes, this is just insane. And I can see you all are pretty well wound up. Uh, karma's a, a, a B word, according to uh, Hildegard Pyle. Uh, let's look at another uh, picture. What the heck? Here's another picture to look at. Tested positive. These are the important numbers today. These three people have tested positive. And, of course, this has led to all kinds of speculation over whether this is a fake out that uh, maybe Trump didn't want to Trump. <laughs> I mean, was that sound ever better? Was it ever more appropriate? Yes, are we angry? We damn right we're angry. Enough of this crap. Um, uh, Boris Johnson and Bolsonaro, yes, they had gotten sick as well. But I think on June 2nd, let me see if I can, I've got one other person who might have said that to me. Um, on October 2nd, 1919, so 21 years ago, or 101 years ago, Woodrow Wilson suffered the stroke that effectively ended his presidency. Wow. So October 2nd, what a thing. And here we are. By the way, we're going to have a guest here in a little bit. You know him, you love him. John Winkleman is going to be here briefly uh, in, in just a few minutes. And... Um, South Dakota had 740 new, seven new cases yesterday. That's a lot. South Dakota is not that populated. Um, let's look at our numbers because they are very interesting as always. And this time what I've done is look all the way over to the right. You can see the population of what we're looking at. The population in the United States, of course, 331,494,557 looks like. 920 new deaths. 47,389 new cases, would have been 386 new cases if the Trumps hadn't come up with it. I guess 385 if uh, Hope Hicks hadn't gotten found to have it. Notice that India is significantly larger than the United States. So even though India is catching up to us, because we are a fraction of India's population, it is far more serious here that we, the United States, are not able to manage this damn thing. It's just appalling. And, you know, I, do, I seriously do not wish any harm on President Trump, other than to say this reality show presidency, this third, fourth season of it has gone on too long. There have been too many episodes. They have jumped the shark. It is time for this to end. And we want to feel confident that this is the end. But, folks, don't be fooled. You still need to get out and vote. You need to get your friends to vote. You need to do whatever you can. Okay, back to some numbers here. Notice that Texas, and again, look all the way over to the right. See the population of Texas, 28,995, basically 29 million, versus California, which is pushing 40 million. So a massive difference in population, not massive, but significant. And Texas is just about to catch California in terms of total cases. Um, they, they are, they're actually neck and neck on the day-to-day -day gaining cases, but they're gaining new deaths. So uh, this continues on and on. Let's, let's see, what else can we look at? How about this? 
So this is, we're back to looking at Kentucky. Kentucky had the number one amount of new deaths in the history of the coronavirus, so 17 of them. And, and 17 new deaths is tragic, of course. I hope now that Republicans will get the concept that not it's, I'm not going to blame just Republicans. People who don't want to believe in the virus will get the damn picture. You got to wear your mask, not only to protect yourself, to protect, protect us. Oh, Siri's yelling at me. Is that Siri? Did you hear that? I'm having trouble hearing you, Siri. All right. Positivities in his inner circle keep climbing up today. Apparently they knew before they went to the fundraiser last night. Now, how does that, how does that feel to be a Republican contributor? You've been invited to a fundraiser. You're so excited. You get to meet the president, your hero. And now you find out the next day that he knew that he had tested positive. Now wait just a damn minute. You just don't even know where to go with this. Um, yeah, pretty terrible. Uh, before we call John Winkleman, I do have a cute picture that I saw. It says, and it looks to be a board meeting. And uh, it says, let's never forget that the public's desire for transparency has balanced our, uh, has to be balanced by our need for concealment, of course. Oh, and before we call John, very big news that I, I don't know that I can show you from here yet, but um, the Postal Service is now 0 and 5 in the 11 lawsuits filed against it as a result of the mail delays. Remember, back about six weeks ago, we had mail delays caused by operational changes that went into effect in July. Uh, yesterday, two more orders went against the Postal Service. In Pennsylvania versus DeJoy, uh, Eastern District, blah, 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 blah. blah. They, the Postal Service can't restrict extra or late trips for mail delivery, and they can't prohibit overtime. That's a major deal. That's a major, major victory, I think. Um, in the other one, Vote Forward versus DeJoy, Judge uh, Sullivan issued his second order against the Postal Service. Uh, as a result of these five preliminary injunctions, the Postal Service has had to walk back all of the changes it made over the summer, as well as making all sorts of commitments about what it will do to ensure timely de delivery of mail ballots. That's good news for voters and others who depend on the Postal Service. These five, five rulings should mean something else as well. Um, and this is, these are not my words, uh, but I agree with them. Uh, the Postmaster General and the Board of Governors have received the strongest of rebukes from four federal judges in five cases, representing 24 states, several national organizations, and many individuals. This turn of events has to be unprecedented, and it has been a total embarrassment for the Postal Service's leaders. It won't happen, but they should think about resigning. Boy, do I agree with that. Okay, let's see if we can call John Winkleman. Call John Winkleman. Calling John Winkleman. Home. Hello, Hank. Hi, John. How are you? I, I apologize to you because, as I said to you, we have not, we're not going to get your theme music together before the election, yeah. I don't think. But I'm imagining it. Hey to be a blues da, ba, da, da, or some sort of blues about the healthcare blues or the single payer blues. Sounds like a good plan. That sounds like a good plan. I agree. Do you want to make any comments about the interesting uh, healthcare news that was revealed with the president coming up uh, testing positive? Do you want to have any comments you want to make? Well, I, I have tons of comments to make, but they're probably too colorful for the show. Oh, so give, it oh give it a no, shot. Oh, give it a shot. I think well, I, I think we'll skip, skip, you know, it's, it's, I think the, the trip to the, to the fundraiser yesterday, it just reemphasizes that he cares about nothing but himself. I it just, it blows my mind that all these people are paying tons of money to, to contribute to him and he's getting them sick. Yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, now, someone sent me a link that I'm going to throw up here on the screen. 
and I'll have to read you the comment. By the way, Chris Pritchard's here, and he shared. Everybody share, please. Come on, let's share it out there. We need some help. So it says, Merriam Webster reports a 3,500%, 30,500% spike in searches for Schadenfreude after Trump COVID <laughs> diagnosis. And it says, um, let's see, the definition is defined as enjoyment obtained from the troubles of others. Now, Honestly, I'm not, I don't want to get enjoyment from this because truly I really don't want for anyone to be sick from this disease. Uh, I, I really don't. But I do want, I really do want this presidency to end. I think it's time to end this thing. This guy's a mess. So that's yeah. just, that's my two cents. John, I'm guessing you're in the same yeah. general. I, I, I've, been, I've been there for since November 8th of, 2016. Yes, uh, Chris Pritchard yeah. says he'll comment. Uh, well, you, you know, you guys can go ahead and hit the comment section um, if you'd like. So I found something, be, uh, and I have to confess to you, John, I had um, equipment difficulties with the uh, video setup today. So at the last moment, I was fussing with stuff instead of researching the pieces that uh, you sent to me. Okay, no worries. Uh, but uh, uh, you can you can share them with the with the group afterwards. That's, yes, that's we can fine. do that. You can do that. And, and there is another one which I didn't send you. I think the Michael Moore posting might frighten everybody. Oh, why, why, did he say? Why, why believe? Why he like? Why would you believe Trump's lies now? What makes you think he's really sick? I think he's taking yes. advantage of yes. of the fact that Hope Hicks got sick, and they huddled for twenty four hours and said. Here's what we're going to do, so he he, he can have options that. And the most thing in all caps on Michael Moore's post was delay the election, which I don't know that you can do that, but that might be what he's trying to do. Uh, the guy, I'm putting up a picture uh, that someone sent to me of uh, the president drinking from some bleach with a sign that says that didn't work. <laughs> oh well. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I've just, I'm getting texts from all kinds of people. One, and the one I just got says, uh, and this came from our buddy, John McPhee. I don't know if it's okay to share this. It affects virtually nobody to, to quote the commander in cheat. Therefore the diagnosis indicates that Donald Trump is a virtual nobody. I like yeah. that. Right. That's I like that one. Good. That one's even better. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the other conspiracy theory is that he's going to fake his death to COVID, so that he can leave the country and be out of reach of the gendarmes. Okay. I, you, all sorts of all sorts of interesting theories. The, all sorts there. of interesting theories, as as you said. But I did I did hear that he's showing some symptoms this morning. So that one thing can lead to another, which can lead to another. Yes, he is definitely showing some symptoms. So, um, yes. Uh, Although, I think he's showed symptoms of something for quite some decades now. But. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, in fact, I had an interesting, uh, uh, I got on a text chain this morning that was sent to me. And it was congratulations to someone's, to my aunt's granddaughter, who has just gotten a wonderful job and everything, you know, is going wonderfully. I only noticed two other people on the chain. So I said, and she was, she's a, the, the host or she's the, the chief person at a wine tasting bar. And I said, why well, I'm ready for some wine to toast our late great president. And um, <laughs> I said something like, actually, I don't wish any harm, but this has gone on too long. There were about 10 people, eight of them I didn't know on this text, mm. and none of them have texted back to support the president and tell me they were upset. So, um, well, let's talk about healthcare because that came up in whatever that thing was on, uh, was that Monday night, Tuesday night? It seems like last Tuesday night. That was Tuesday. That was Tuesday. Oh my goodness. It just no, seems 9 like, PM. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was going to say, if you can explain to us what you think Trump's program is, what his sec suggestion is, I suspect that'll take the least amount of time. So, you know, we, you and I talked yesterday about you know, how to approach today's, today's call before the news of, the, right. of the president getting COVID. 
Um, and, and I think our conversation really focused at the time on, on what the vice president said, which was not consistent with his actual plan. So we decided that the best thing to do was kind of go over what you just asked, which is the president's, the president's quote unquote plan. He has no plan. Uh, he's never had a plan. He announced his plans over and over again. And you're going to have the greatest plan and it's going to be the cheapest and all sorts of wonderful things that he says, uh, but still no plan. Uh, the only thing that we know for sure is that he's issued some executive orders and I'll go over them in a minute. And he's also supporting the Department of Justice uh, to try and kill the Affordable Care Act because right. 17 states are in the Supreme Court on November 10th uh, with an effort to to kill the Affordable Care Act because there is no longer a penalty for not having insurance, which is what Justice Roberts uses his excuse, excuse me, his, his reasoning um, when, when it first made it to the Supreme Court. Is that the so-called uh, of, of, individual mandate? Is that what Individual is? mandate, okay. yes. You must, you must have insurance. So they, and there was a penalty for not having insurance and Republicans only in Congress has been able to repeal the penalty. The individual mandate is still there. There's just no penalty associated with it because right. the law it's a is the law. Penalty of zero or, or something. A penalty of zero. Yeah, right. Correct. And so the Republican states are claiming basically that that elimination of that penalty, which is what Justice Roberts used to allow the Affordable Care Act to succeed, uh, it means it, it can no longer succeed. Now, interestingly, the appointee for the Supreme Court seat of RBG has, I don't know if anybody saw this on, on the call, uh, but uh, she, in a mock trial, actually committed to keeping the Affordable Care Act in the mock trial. So he may not be getting what he thinks he's getting, um, from her, at least with respect to the Affordable Care Act. Right. And, and Chuck Schumer, although he won't probably won't get 60 votes, put in a demand in, uh, in the Senate to have a vote, a procedural vote on requiring the Justice Department to no longer support the, the case at the Supreme Court on November 10th. So there's a whole lot of movements with respect to that. However, back to the question at hand and, and the president's executive orders, one of which was to uh, commit to retaining uh, the pre-existing conditions portion of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, there is no basis in law for that executive order to do anything other than it is our intention to support the retention of of protections for pre-existing conditions. Right. Uh, Vice President Biden overstated the number of people who would be affected by pre-existing conditions because he included those of us over 65 who are eligible for Medicare in that count. Uh, it's really, uh, Kaiser Foundation has indicated it's about 54 million people who would not be able to get individual coverage due to their pre-existing condition if the Affordable Care Act was to be eliminated. Right. Um, the second executive order had to do with uh, surprise billing, and that surprise billing is part of the Biden plan as well. So when you share the link to the Biden platform, uh, you'll see that, that he also has the a section on, on surprise billing and uh, emphasizes how that's going to work versus the executive order, which basically says, yeah, there's no more surprise billing. There is no, you cannot prevent that without a law. And the executive order is not a legal document. It is an executive order basically claiming what he wants to, to do. Um, the third item is the $200, I think a gift card that they're planning on sending to. Right. Several, yeah. hundred, several hundred million senior citizens um, who are already on Medicare and get their prescriptions through Part D, meaning a gift card is, I don't know how we're going to use it. Um, <laughs> and there is no indication as to how that's going to be paid for. 
And it's so, also going to have Donald Trump's name on it, right? Isn't that the point and, of yeah. it? And it will arrive that before is the, point. the election. That is the point of it, yes. The long line, the, it, along those lines, hopefully people saw the whole thing with the food uh, baskets going to the people who are getting food and they, uh, food on, because they don't have the money to buy their own food and they're going to the food banks. Um, somehow a letter snuck into there um, about uh, that's signed by the president. And no, most of the food banks don't have the resources to throw that out. So they're going to be staying in the food basket. So, now, so do you suppose you can get COVID from those notes? Fortunately not. Oh, good. Okay. I just wondered. No, no. And, and, I, and, I think and, that, that it grows stale quickly, and, even if it was on the, on the, on the letter to start with. Well, and per, are you saying that President Trump didn't actually send those notes? I am saying that he will find any way possible to force his people yeah. to insist that there be something with his signature on it in just about everything that takes place when it comes to government support. And yes. there is a very strong sense that that particular letter uh, is contrary to the Hatch Act. Right. Uh, so that, that right. too could be all these people can be in trouble for complying with his request. So we're we're looking once again for a good reason to fake your illness. Yes. <laughs> well, I think the Hatch Act would not apply to him. It would apply to his campaign official. Right. So they're the ones who are listening. You know, they've already claimed that he, the president asked us to do this, so we did it. Uh, that you know. He's absolved. You know, the mob boss is always absolved because he gets somebody else to do his dirty work. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm so tempted to push the button with Trump referring to mob bosses taking the fifth. Of course, you know, his son recently took the fifth. Well, let's talk yeah. at least about the one thing that was pretty, you know, we've all, we're all somewhat familiar with the Affordable Care Act. But one of the things the Affordable Care Act was missing was what they call a public option. And Joe Biden's been talking about that. And it doesn't apply to every state, does it? It applies to every state. So oh, it what, does. Went, what went wrong with the vice president's statements on, on Tuesday was that he, he referenced Medicaid. So the public option is is according to his plan. So this is the difference between his platform, which he actually has a platform and it's available online. And if you share that link with folks later, then they can see it. Yeah, I have put uh, all three, they, by the way, I've put all three links up, everybody, if you wanna get a look at them, these are the links that John sent to us that he's basing his discussion on today. Right, so the, you know, part of the reason you and I had to, wanted to go down this path was because what he said during the debate is inconsistent with the plan. The public option is in fact, the public option that was missing from the Affordable Care Act that the progressives wanted in 2010 that President Obama realized he'd never get through Congress without, with, with that in it. So they left it out. Um, but the, but President, the Vice President Biden is, in his platform is he wants to have a public option available through the Affordable Care Act for those folks with or without health insurance to acquire through the exchange, by the way, um, that would be comparable to them uh, getting Medicare. So it's not Medicare for everyone. It is a public option to acquire insurance from the government rather than a third party private insurance company. It does not eliminate in, in private insurance because Medicare doesn't eliminate private insurance. Private insurance right. runs the Medicare Advantage. Private insurance runs Part D, the pharmaceutical plans. Private insurance runs supplemental insurance for those who want to cover the portion that Medicare doesn't cover. So there is private insurance involved. But during the debate, the, pre the vice president only talked about Medicaid and expansion of Medicaid and, and having the public option for low income Americans already eligible for Medicaid. That's yes, that would happen too, which is why I think your question about only in particular states was relevant because only particular states have not all of the states have expanded Medicaid. Yeah, there's fourteen states that have not expanded Medicaid. 
Um, and keep in mind, every state that's expanded Medicaid has reduced their cost overall. Right. Right. Absolutely. You know, I'm and also the only reason, yeah. I, I'm also ahead. reminded, John, and this is nothing to do with you or your presentation, which is as clear as it could be. But I am reminded of the Monty Python episode when, you know, your the English boys are, are being told whether to hang their coat on the upper or lower peg. And it depends on whether they're spending the weekend at another boy's house based on whether they've had a haircut on Tuesday and the outcome of the master's game. That's something so complex that, yeah. that it almost, it just is almost beyond imagination. And, and you have a, a clear understanding of it, but you're an expert. And normal human beings, normal citizens, hardly have a chance at the level of complexity in our healthcare system. Unfortunately, it is very true. And particularly when you're dealing with a private insurance company, this is part of the reason I've been a proponent of, of government-run single-payer healthcare for quite some time is because it removes the profit motive Oh, I might have lost John. I'm going to call John. I'm going to call John right back. Call John Winkleman. Calling John Winkleman. Sorry home. about that, John. I'm not sure what happened, folks. I wonder if John didn't have his phone charged. I heard some beeps and I didn't realize I was talking to nothing. Right. You went away. <laughs> I thought for a second that uh, uh, that the Republicans have gotten a hold of my tele my telephone, <laughs> that uh, Brett Guthrie's got a hold of my telephone. Well, look, we, we, we are um, – I, I would kind of like to switch back to the discussion of where we are as a nation because I know you have interest in this, uh, of where we are as a nation now with – President Trump sick with this disease that he's been denying and an election mm -hmm. 32 days away. I am, I am not a political pundit, although I like to watch all these, all the, all the news shows, the progressive news shows on this, on this topic and read things like Michael Moore's posting this morning. And, and, you know, I, when COVID hit, I felt that we were, making significant progress towards a government run single payer healthcare system, which is what I was talking about when I got this, when I lost, lost right. touch with you. Um, and I thought we were going to be closer to, because this was going to show the country why it's important to have healthcare coverage for everybody. Right. And the fact that this president has never created a actual plan to get us out of this and the statistics you were showing at the beginning before you called me emphasize the fact that we are still at the height of this if you look at one of the things that just i'm kind of moving off target here a little bit but um the new york numbers on deaths but they're now number five in the four or five in in the count that you showed the total cases because they got it under control Yes, they're having a little bit of a spike, but they did what was necessary. They were the epicenter to begin with before we knew anything about it. And yes, we've learned a, we've learned a lot about it, but they did what was necessary. But there's otherwise there's been no plan, which is why we're seeing spikes in the in the Midwest, North Dakota, South Dakota, Missouri, for example, all Republican states that did nothing and wanted to open up, and now we're seeing major spikes. Still no plan. I am and my family are extremely frustrated by the fact that we're not going to get out of this until 2021 or 2022. Yeah. I'm sorry. We should have been, we should be a lot further along. And had we had a pandemic task force, had we had better health coverage, there would be many more opportunities for us to do what's necessary to take care of ourselves and protect ourselves. And we would not be having these debate, these fights over opening up the country. We would have done what was necessary to begin with. And so we are behind the eight ball. And, and unfortunately, if, if the Republicans win again, and if the Republicans hold on to the Senate, we're not going to get out of this because we're never going to get a plan. 
Now, I'd like to think that what's happened in the last 24 hours is going to convince the Senate that they need to get a hell of a lot closer to what the House has passed now twice, $3.4 trillion in May and $2.2 trillion yesterday, uh, and, and get some, some help out to the country and to the states and municipalities so they're not laying off important workers. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like this is ins- it's insanity. The and list of businesses it, that lost their PPP, their PPP funding, ended yesterday. And right. no plan in place to catch up. No. And and layoffs layoffs galore. The airline industry is laying off um, 40,000 people just between the top two uh, airlines. We've got Disney laying off 28,000 people. we got we got one out of six businesses, small businesses closing and, and not coming back. I mean, it's, it's, we've got people not getting their, their unemployment checks. I just, it's, uh, I don't know. That's, it's a scary situation. I'd like to think that what's happened in the last 24 hours might, might convince might your senator yeah. <laughs> to make, to do something, to get our off senators. his butt and do something. Yeah. Our senators, yeah. we we've got two winners. Um, we've got two winners here in Kentucky. Um, in fact, uh, you know, the irony is there's, I get told that the, uh, the, from various folks in, who are into politics that neither Mitch nor Rand actually care for President Trump, but that none of them will step up. None of, I mean, here's Rand Paul, for example. Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist and an orange-faced windbag. That's that's Rand Paul's honest statement right. about yeah. President Trump. But they will not. And, and at this point, I hope that the country is ready to hold Republicans responsible. It really wouldn't have taken but about four of them to decide to make a difference. And, uh, you know, even if a few of them in the House had supported the impeachment and pushed it over to the Senate, if what would it have taken? Three senators? And the impeachment yep. would have become an actual trial. So uh, it's a very frustrating time. Um, and John, thank you for explaining this crazy uh, healthcare system that we have. That we uh, uh, that's because of our lack of political will has been unable has been hamstrung in terms of dealing with uh, the COVID virus, the pandemic. Absolutely. Um, and and for those of those of, of your listeners who are asking questions in the comments. I will get to them later today when I actually can see them. For whatever reason, I only getting the first four words of everybody's comment. Oh, so that's okay. I will I, I will look at them later and respond if anybody has questions because I know we kind of went off topic a few times uh, during our our conversation. But if anybody has questions to follow up, if they look at the website have questions, I will be happy to answer them. Yes. Well, uh, it's uh, I, I'm good with going off topic, especially today. <laughs> especially with the yeah. news. I'm, I'm just good. Yeah. All right, John, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Talk Thanks to you soon. Spending. Everybody stay safe and healthy. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, um, John Winkleman explaining, and and uh, uh, let's see, Chris Pritchard says Trump should give every one of the senators who acquitted him a big hug with no masks. Yeah, that might work. That might work. I mean, you know, the, the, in being very serious, um, our nation, I, I suppose what's going on here is that Republicans are so afraid of losing power. They are so afraid of not being able to remain in power. And, and uh, something else that has become very clear to me, and we've talked about this several times, rural America has something like 36 or even 37 percent of the senators uh, that's how much representation they have. Well, with that, they should have uh, all of the pieces of the contract for rural America should already be in place. I mean, we should already have restored health care. We should already have, um, you know, national child care. We should have been supporting small family subsistence farms. We should have been rebuilding infrastructure. We should have had a living wage. We should have been supporting workers, rural broadband. We should have legalized cannabis. All of these things should have happened with the support Republicans got from rural America. But that's not what they used that support for. They used that support to get themselves in power, mostly with money from large corporate interests like, oh, uh, Facebook, 
Facebook actually contributes to Brett Guthrie, uh, Verizon, AT and T, uh, the drug companies, all of them. So that's why we have Congress people who are beholden to their contributors. That's one of the big reasons I'm running is because I don't I don't think that the balance is right between people and corporations. I'm not saying corporations are bad. I'm saying that people need to have more of a voice in their lives. And people should actually probably have a little bit more than corporations do. But we don't, we as people don't have nearly enough. Uh, Cindy points out, by the way, that uh, Republicans are going so far. Republicans in office are doing things to slow down the vote. So in Texas, I think the, the Texas AG has, uh, maybe it's the AG, Attorney General, maybe it's the governor has limited the amount of drop-off boxes for ballots to one per county. And Texas is big. Texas counties are big. I mean, the, the, the saying about Texas is miles and miles of miles and miles. So this is going to make it all the more difficult for you to vote, vote by dropping off, especially if you're concerned about the mail. But, folks, we got to do it. Mark Maselli says, yes, it's the governor. We have got to do it. We've got to step up. And the thing I want to challenge all of you, and I don't care where you are. If you're in Kentucky, yes. But wherever you are as Americans, and I realize we have some folks from outside the country here watching, we all need to work to get other people to show up to vote. We had something like 100 million people did not vote in 2016 out of something like uh, 225,000 eligible voters, 100,000 people didn't vote. That's a larger group than elected Donald Trump. That's a larger group than voted for Hillary Clinton. So we have got to do the right thing here, folks. And not only that, after this election, you need to stay involved. I promise you, I will be staying involved. However this election goes, I will be staying involved. We have so much work to do. We have corruption to be gotten rid of in our government. Corruption is now a way of life in the United States, in the government of the United States. And much of it is legal. Much of it is legal. Um, you know, the idea that Brett Guthrie can go from personal net wealth of under $422,000 12 years ago, and now he's pushing $11 million, we think, according to OpenSecrets.org. That's incredible. Meanwhile, in that time period, the minimum wage has not changed. It stayed at $7.25. So our government is disconnected from the people. It's very connected to corporate America, to wealthy America, to powerful elite America. So that's why I'm here in Kentucky in the 2nd District. This is a district where we can decide what the Democratic Party needs to be, those of us on the ground. And I see Hildegard Pyle here, and she's saying she'll be involved. This is what it takes, folks. We need to make this into a movement. We need to clean up our government, and it will not be easy. It will take quite a bit of time, but it starts right now, right now, reaching out helping other people make sure they vote. Yes, contributing to candidates you believe in. You know that I can use all the help you can give. Uh, I'm running against a guy with two and a half to $3 million on hand, and I've gotten in nowhere near that. So uh, that's what we are up against. Encouraging people to vote makes a massive difference. Sending me some money makes a massive difference. Making sure your voice is heard. Well, okay, thank you all for being here. It's... Uh, it's time for us to wind this up. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna remind you again that we are. Oh gosh, I've lost I've lost control of my life here. Um, here we go. Now I've got it back. I've got it back together. Thank you all for being here. Uh, let's take care of each other. I do wish the president and his family well. I do not think it'd be a good thing for them to pass over him to get very very sick. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and win this election. Let's end this reality show presidency. All right. Thank you all. I will talk to you later.